Hey, I'm Josh. Welcome to Make It. Today, we're talking with Pei Katron about her journey from being a teacher to becoming Instagram famous and getting paid to travel around the world taking photos. Let's go talk with Pei. Thanks a lot, Pei, for joining us. It's really yeah, great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so help us understand what is it that you do? What kind of photography are, are you taking these days? So I am a travel and commercial photographer mostly, but I've sort of transitioned a lot over the years and have done you know, wedding and portrait work, um, travel work, commercial work, and now I'm trying to lean more towards nonprofit humanitarian type work. So I feel like it's an ever evolving process. Getting to that process, like that, that's that fun thing of how you go from point A to point B, like that's a, that's a long process we're all going through and I'd love to know what your process has been because maybe you know, I want to be a better photographer, I want to have more Instagram followers, you've got a, a bunch of Instagram followers, it's really, really awesome. Like, I would love to be more like you. How, how would I get to that point? My sort of photographic career has been pretty long and, and not very direct, I feel. So initially I was actually, all of my schooling got me to, um, work as an elementary school special ed teacher. So I did that for 10 years and then did photography on the side as a hobby. It was sort of what I did on evenings and weekends and summers off mm -hmm. and it was great because eventually I started getting paid to do the photography work but it was sort of very slow, a very slow build up. Initially my first jobs came from my photo or my from my students in my classroom. Oh, really? So yeah, so I started taking portraits of my students and then sending them home to their parents and the portraits that I, were take, that I was taking were of um, my students, most of whom had moderate to severe special needs. It can be really difficult to get a good photo of a kid that had spe has special needs. Being their teacher, somebody who interacted with them on a daily basis, I knew them, I knew their expressions, and I knew um, how to make them laugh, that sort of thing. So I was able to get these really great photos of them. So I started doing that, then I started doing weddings. Um, and it was great because I was still teaching, so any money that I made on photography could just get put back into photography, basically. So I was using that money to pay for camera gear, <laughs> and I was using it Feeding to pay. Feeding the habit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I was using it to pay for travel, mm -hmm. right? Because travel is expensive, and on a teacher salary, it's not, you know, not always easy to make happen. So I... Um, would do a bunch of weddings and stuff and then I would make sure I saved time to travel abroad once a summer mm -hmm. and did that for a while and then I realized that you know while my wedding photos were always very good and my clients were happy it was the travel photos that were making people go wow mm -hmm. like you're really good at this was there one photo that you remember that was like, this is the moment where I've now become this photographer, like this travel photo that people have just like, wow, that photo, and you can like look at it as a point of like, wow, that, that was it. You know, unfortunately, I feel like there's not one specific photo. Or maybe like a, a, um, a trip that you went to? Or? Yeah, I definitely feel like probably the trip that I, I went to China for a month in wow. 2007. So it was a year before the Beijing Olympics. So mm. I got to see some of the, the, build up. the build up to that. Because I spent that month there, I just kind of came back with a lot of really, really interesting travel images that, um, that really showed that I had spent time there mm -hmm. and, you know, Go, got to see the country. A level be yeah. a lot below, like, the normal veneer you see as a first-time traveler. You yeah. Sure go one level deeper. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so, so, That's yeah. Awesome. Um, but how did, what did you do with those photos after you came back, and how did you... I often get asked now how I got started actually doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like one of the best things to do or one of the best pieces of, of, of advice that I can give to people is to really just find opportunities on your own to make th those things happen mm -hmm. or to get those images. So basically what I was doing very sort of in inadvertently over those years was creating a very strong travel portfolio. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was really heavily using Flickr, mm -hmm. so I, you know, started sharing on Flickr. I didn't really have a big following on Flickr or anything, which was fine. Um, it was a place where I really learned about uh, photography. I learned a lot about photography mm -hmm. on Flickr by sort of scouring EXIF data and right. learning how people 
did special things with their cameras and well, Flickr has been, and I, I haven't been on it for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, but same. It, but it's been a it was a really great place for learning a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and interacting yeah. with lots of different interesting groups of yeah, people. Yeah, the groups and the forums were 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 super helpful. You know, I could right. just say, you know, I saw this image and I don't know how they did it, and ask the person, ask, ask the photographer. Yeah, They're yeah, right or there, go directly to them. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was it was invaluable in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually, when Flickr sort of faded away, I mean, because Flickr sort of faded away, Instagram came around it was like at the right thing at the right time so I started sharing stuff on Instagram and at that point I had already um, I, I had already been a photographer for 10 years before Instagram came out so I felt like at least when I when I started it I was you know a leg up I had a leg up on certain right. other people who had never taken photos before because I was able to grow a following on Instagram it that was the, the single thing that really helped me to connect with clients other than people in my neighborhood, basically, who would hire me for weddings and, and portrait sessions. And, and now, uh, I mean, you've got a lot of followers on Instagram. Yeah. And is, is that where you're finding yourself getting the majority of your clientele is, is through there? Is that how you're, you're saying that you're working on, uh, working with NGOs and working with other kind of like uh, organizations? Are you finding them through there or do you, you have another mechanism that you usually find your clients? What I really started doing when Instagram came around was travel, um, travel and commercial work. So. I was doing a lot of working with travel, uh, with tourism boards, with um, hotels, airlines, maybe travel publications, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And so I feel like a lot of those did come as a result of them finding me on Instagram, or sort of um, there were you know there would be Google searches about like top Instagram photographers to work with or yeah. top travel accounts on Instagram, that sort of thing. And be on those lists and like trying to yeah, get yourself so, at the top so of the list. Be, <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't doing anything. You know, I wasn't actively doing anything except right. for posting really cool photos, mm. right? I was posting these really great images, and I think people, um, I mean, people love that, right? Mm. So I they could tell that I was putting a lot of myself and a lot of work and effort into creating great imagery, and uh, thankfully it was very well appreciated. So I did get featured on some lists and stuff. So I feel like that sort of helped to perpetuate itself. So people knew where to find me. They knew who I was. I didn't have to, the beauty of Instagram is that you don't really have to prove yourself because people have been following you for right. a long time. Right. Or there's this trail of the things that you've done over the years that show consistency in sort of being able to deliver good content and stuff. So right. um, for me, definitely early on with Instagram, finding clients, um, was was easy because they would find me and kind of come to me. But you know, as the market has shifted and as my own photographic interests have shifted, I've I've had to kind of change strategies a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not necessarily that the types of clients I want are always coming to me these days. So sometimes you're going to them. Sometimes I'm going to them. Even if you're a successful Instagrammer or photographer on Instagram with a lot of followers, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that jobs are going to come your way. Right there's still some element of hustle that you have to follow, right? right. You it's still a business, have to do. like anything else. Yeah, you have to absolutely. Like actually figure out what it is you want to do, figure out yeah. what you want to offer, who you yeah. want to work for. Like just mm -hmm. coming and taking any uh, job that comes by, maybe that's important when you're just starting off, but at yeah. some point you need to be really choosy. Like it's your yeah. time, it's your it's your brand yeah. even. Like yeah. who do you work with and yep. who are you trying to accomplish? So does that mean that you, um, you know, you've you got Instagram, do you have other places where you store your photos or that you have like your own website or I how do. do you accomplish well, like creating this online presence yeah so I feel like I mean I I'm in love with social media and I've I've been and social media is in love with you yes I've been <laughs> I, I like to think so every now and then I, I, I get I get some good feedback but um, I've been sharing photos online since 2002 so way back in in the live journal days so I'm kind of old school starting with way back when the internet was powered by uh, sticks and yeah. uh, wood burning yep. stoves yep yeah. yep absolutely <laughs> so I've been sharing images online for a very long time so that the idea of using imagery to connect with people is a very strong mm -hmm. a very strong one and yeah. so I, I mean I just love doing that you you find that things kind of come and go over time mm -hmm. right like I was really active on Tumblr for a while. Now I'm not so much active. You know, I, ha I do have a website. I'm on Twitter. All those things. So mm -hmm. I have a presence in a lot of places, even though it's not necessarily always really active. Right. Um, but what it does show people is that I'm pretty consistent across the board in terms of um, the the fact that I'm producing high quality content and I'm very consistent about it in terms of um, messaging and having a you know my social media voice is figured out and I represent myself really well. So the, the beautiful thing about having this presence on social media, kind of like having a good Instagram feed, is that 
it can serve as your portfolio. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people um, come to me and they have never even seen my website um, because you know they see Instagram, they see Twitter, they see all the things that I'm sharing elsewhere, so they know what I can create. Right. Um, and the other, the other really cool thing about it is that because I have these assets online that speak to who I am and what I can create, I can just cold email or cold call somebody and say, hey, check Here's out my, my work. Here's my Instagram feed, check it out. Yeah, see what look at what I do, I'd love to work with you. And it really opens doors, it opens people, you know, people are more welcoming to the idea of talking to you, they, mm -hmm. it legitimizes you, right, right. as a photographer. Exactly. So, um, but then also really, you know, when you distill all the social media stuff down, it really comes down to quality content, mm -hmm. right? So. In terms of the imagery that you're creating, how is that setting you apart from the crowd? Right. Is it, um, you know, is it that you only shoot a certain thing, or you shoot in a certain way, or you, you know, people have done it in any number of ways. Right. But really, I feel like everybody, every photographer, kind of starts out with the, the sort of idea of like trying to emulate the images that they see other people creating. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, I did it. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But I feel like. Once you kind of have all that technical stuff figured out, you like kind of learn composition, that sort of thing, you really have to sort of take a step back and like creatively change what you're doing so that what you're actually creating is different w from what you're, you know, right. the rest of your peers are creating. You know what I think would be really awesome is actually take a look at some of these photos so that yeah. we can talk through some of your thoughts and why you took the photos that you took and how you mm -hmm. approach them. So let's, let's go walk over to the, our demo desk. Okay, uh, sounds there. great. And take a look Perfect. at some photos. I think it would be really, really fun to take a look at some of your photos. Yeah. Get an idea of like the kind of photography that you do mm -hmm. and the progression that you've gone through and help us understand like how you approached these different things and the, mm -hmm. the creativity uh, that you used to accomplish these different goals. And One of the very first trips that I went on as a photographer that, who was invited mm -hmm. by a tourism board was to Jordan, mm -hmm. which was incredible. Um, I just have two images from that trip and they were all, um, they were both taken with an iPhone. Um, so this was taken in Petra. Mm -hmm. um, and for the longest time, I know that it was something that we talked about earlier, um, but this was one of my most liked images on Instagram. What were the, the things that people were connecting to it? was like, what was the, what I think that, you know, people on Instagram really love those like epic landscape type mm -hmm. images. So I think that this sort of fits into that category where, you know, it's a big epic landscape. The lighting is really interesting because the wall is just kind of glowing orange. Mm -hmm. And then just having that little person in there for scale mm -hmm. is really helpful. So yeah. I feel like it made it, you know, because of the human element, it made it a little bit more relatable. I've I mean, seen this, pictures of, of Petra yeah. where you don't have the human for scale yeah. and it looks like a dollhouse. Yeah. It's you have, amazing how you'd have no idea. You have no like, idea how, how big, big these, these caverns are or these, um, these pathways are. Mm -hmm. So, and this is another one from that same trip. So this is from a hot air balloon mm. over Wadi Rum. Mm -hmm. So that landscape to me is incredible. So I have a couple images here of some of the early stuff that I was doing mm -hmm. with just like geometry and lines and stuff like that. So this is one of the examples of like not really providing context mm -hmm. for where this is, yeah, where is it can this? be what found. Yeah. So it's actually a, a wall, it's a, it's a corner um, in just this really cool building. Mm -hmm. It's at, um, I think, the Louis Vuitton um, Foundation in Paris. Oh, okay. So it's a really beautiful structure. Um, and everybody goes and kind of photographs like the big overarching yeah. structure, the building, the ceiling, outside and stuff. And I was just like, here's a really cool corner <laughs> that no one's looking at and no one's taking photos of, but look at those lines, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is a type of imagery that I was creating. This is another one, for example, where it's like, it's something very, that's not necessarily uncommon because they're just folding chairs at a stadium, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not an uncommon scene, but it's, especially with this processing, it's become so abstract that mm -hmm. you almost can't tell, especially at first glance um, from a little further back. Maybe you can't even tell what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's really just distilling. I mean, I went on this whole tour of at t Park and I came away with just like, let me just photograph like this section of the chairs. And you can't even tell like that it's a stadium, what stadium it is, that kind of thing. So I kind of like that. This is another one where it just shows sort of my eye for geometry and how I'm always drawn to scenes like this. So this is at the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh. I loved this, the geometry of the scene. I started to need a little bit more in an image, even mm. though it was ge like there were some interesting things happening happening with the like the lines and the symmetry, the mm -hmm. geometry, that sort of thing. 
So I sl slowly started putting things into frame. And so I would start with, you know, I have a lot of images where it would just start with like an object in the frame, and then I slowly started building up to people and right. stuff. Before you move so, on, I, yeah. I, have to, I have to point out one thing. Yep. You did a very good job with your corners. I was hoping you would notice that. Very good job. Yeah. I like so, that. I appreciate that. That is, that is the sign mm -hmm. of a, a good photographer yeah. paying, I mean, paying attention to the attention corners. To all, and it's like both, right? <laughs> yep. Pretty yep. well. Very, I, I noticed that yeah. right away. Yeah. So very good. good. Good job. Okay. That tells me a lot about you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's great. I feel like we are definitely kindred spirits in that sense. This is another one, you know, slowly adding in a person. Mm -hmm. Here again, really just being drawn to the lines and the patterns, mm -hmm. but then um, just at, like a, adding a little human touch and a little um, something that tells a little bit more of a story that kind of mm -hmm. makes you stop and look at the image for a bit, little bit longer. One of the things that I've been really trying to do more recently with the images that I've been taking is to try to tell more of a story with the photos. So not only is it this really cool location, but what's going on in it that's just a little bit more intriguing that mm -hmm. really kind of makes you stop and, and think and wonder like who these people are, what are they doing, um, what sort of situation um, are you finding yourself in? So mm -hmm. I love this shot taken in Seoul. Mm -hmm. I feel like over the years I've kind of gotten to this place where I'm almost too reliant on travel mm -hmm. in my photography. Right. So sometimes I'm home and I don't take any photos, or I go to places where wherever I feel like I'm at home, I feel like I'm not capturing that much. So I'm really trying to take those same ideas that I've been applying to my travel photography and apply them to closer things that are closer to me, mm -hmm. right? So this is my, uh, my brother-in-law and my niece. So just finding this kind of very natural, sweet, tender moment. And then this, for example, actually, um, was taken just a few blocks from my house mm -hmm. in San Francisco. So it was just a nice, like, there are very a lot of very visually interesting mm -hmm. elements so here. The, the pattern, the repeating. Mm -hmm. and but most people would have walked right by it. But to me, this is something that would have stopped me in my tracks when I was traveling. Mm -hmm. And sort of kind of now that I'm like, OK, well. Well, why wouldn't this stop me in my tracks? In yeah, exactly. Like, why would I just walk by it here mm -hmm. just because it's you know in my neighborhood, for example? Yeah. So yeah, cool. so I'm just trying to do more st storytelling here at home. I think mm -hmm. that's sort of the That's awesome. what we've come full circle to. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thanks, Pei, for coming by and sharing with us all of your photos and tips. They've been awesome. They've been really great. Thanks a lot to everybody out there for coming in this week and, and checking out on the Make It Photography Show. Uh, we'll be back again next week with another guest, some more topics, and a lot of more fun. Thanks a lot, and have a great one.